What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Nemesis. And as I was just finishing up editing the first trailer reaction, a second trailer dropped, uh, and it's actually a little different, apparently. So, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do a reaction to this one too. Um, some people are saying they liked it more, uh, that it showed a little bit more for sure. So, before I do my full breakdown video of like screenshots, I figured we could watch this, react to it, and then I'll take a couple screenshots for this one, and we'll just do a slightly longer breakdown video, and I'll have that up for you tomorrow. So today you'll get these two reactions, tomorrow you'll get the breakdown of both these trailers. So uh, yeah, without further ado, let's check out trailer two. I'll put a link to it down below. If you want to watch it down there, uh, be my guest. What are you doing out hitchhiking on a night like this, anyway? Oh, there's hitchhiking, huh? You used to live here, you said. Raccoon huh. City, and are you using me? Oh, wow. Out. That's very, like Silent Hill had an opening like that, but uh, also Resident Evil 2 did, but just Claire wasn't in the vehicle with the truck driver. Oh, cool! Hello? That's how the dog gets infected? I mean the person that hit his dog. Okay, that's cool. That's a cool opening. Oh, it even has the Silent Hill like, sirens, uh, you know. You need to go now. Uh, I mean, I know that's actual Lock sirens. The gates. Um, so Birkin just went and got his daughter. Claire. So we saw Sherry there. This whole town's been poisoned. Oh wow. Oh, there's uh, irons. It could threaten the whole world. Shall we go? Holy cow. Wow, so you get to see the police department and like the, the mansion after that. That's cool. Oh. What the Damn. Oh, look at that, that stained glass. They were experimenting on him. Well, oh this my god. Oh, there's We're Annette. Attack, so, buddy. who are they operating on? Is that Lisa Trevor's mom, maybe? Or maybe it's just Lisa Trevor. Oh, damn. Iron's gonna get it, man. Get him, dogs. Vickers, this is cheap. Vickers. Pick up your oh, there's, oh, there's Fred Vickers. Oh, so that's why the copter crashes. He gets bit. That's, whoa. Oh, man, the liquor going after them. Oh, that's cool. Whoa, was that Wesker saying that? Does he confess or is he like, is he in on it? Like, what's going on? I just really want to get out of this town. Well, okay. So that is Birkin. They're on the train. That's what that big monster was. And they saved him for the end of this trailer. Oh, oh no! Cool. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Chris with his, his famous lighter from the video game, too. Uh, I, I think, I don't know, I like, there's things I like about both trailers. Um, but this one was a little more compact. I mean, it was only like 20 seconds shorter, but uh, it, it didn't feel like very chaotic. Because that first trailer, God, they were throwing so much at us in that first trailer that I got lost. I was like, all right, because as a fan, I'm like, I know Resident Evil 1 and 2 very well. The story is very well. But then they also had like Code Veronica references in there with the, the you know, the, the film reel and stuff playing with Birkin, uh, you know, talking to the, the Ashford twins. So th there's like a, there's a lot going on in this, that first trailer. This one simplified it a little bit. So it didn't feel as overwhelming or maybe it's just because I was so overwhelmed by the first one that there's just so much going on. Um, there are, again, like I said, there are shots in this that look really good. I understand they don't have all the money in the world. I think some people always are like, this needs to look better. It needs to be higher budget. It needs to be all these things. Um, or it needs a, you know, for me, I just, I don't know what the budget for was on this movie, but even with the successes of the previous movies, I think the highest budget of the previous Resident Evils was probably like $70 million, which is a lot for a Resident Evil movie. I would honestly, because I feel like some executives would probably be like, we're not giving you $70 million for a zombie movie. But since some other movies have been successful with that kind of budget for their zombie movies, and Resident Evil also, also had some you know commercial success, even if we don't like those movies. Um, so it's probably easier to get a more reasonable budget for this. But it looks like they... Definitely focused a lot of the budget on the sets, uh, and they try to do their best to make it accurate to the look of the game as far as settings go. Uh, but I know there are arguments and debates to have about the, you know, the look of the characters. Like I'm not going to argue with anybody. Some of them look spot on like the characters, some don't. But to me, that's just not. It doesn't bother me because to me, the characters are what people act like and not what they look like. That's where I always come from, but I also come from probably a, a side of the fence that some of these filmmakers come from because I've worked in movie and comics and TV and stuff, and I've seen adaptations firsthand and why decisions are made, and I, I guess I understand it uh, so much so now that I'm like, okay, I, I think bringing something new to the table or casting the person who is right for the role over their look um, is is the way to go. And I know some people say, okay, well, you got the actor or actress that's right for the role. Now make them look like the character because that's what acting is. 
But sometimes you do try that. You'll try on like, uh, you know, a dozen wigs with different colors to see how it looks, you know, and, uh, you know, sometimes things look really bad. And if you've seen like Fan 4 Stick and you saw the reshoots they did with uh, Kate Mara's, like, or what, what's her name, like, who did, played Sue, had like that terrible wig on, um, or even Michelle Williams and Venom, sometimes bad wigs are bad wigs and it's noticeable. And I would rather a person look less like the character than look more like them, but wearing a bad wig. I mean, look at Woody Harrelson at the end of the first Venom movie also uh, with the Carnage wig so, or the Cletus wig. So to me, it's like, I don't know. I, 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 I understand the arguments on both sides, but for me, I want to see them be the characters and uh, or at least it feel like characters, even if it's a, a new take on the character, it feel like a, a real character. And what I like about this is in the video games, yeah, if you go into the lore of the extended universe stuff, you can learn more about Chris and Claire and kind of their their backstory a little bit. But in the games, they never really say where they come from. You know, they don't you don't get into their full history. So making it about Claire being someone from Raccoon City who grew up there, was an orphan with her brother, and they grew up in the orphanage. But she apparently, because there's a breakdown video of the, the first trailer, um, so I'll put a link to that below and a link to this one. But the director of this, Johannes Roberts, he actually broke down the trailer. And I'll talk more about that in my breakdown video of what he said. But one of the things he said was that Claire uh, ran away from the orphanage and now she's coming back for the first time as an adult. And I guess maybe she's still kept in touch with Chris to some degree, but this is her first time coming back to the city that she grew up on, uh, grew up uh, in and ran away from. And so, uh, so that's adding a character element to her for sure, but it still makes her a character. And she's going to be a driving force for the story in this movie because you're going to find out she was at the orphanage along with Chris and she must have seen some things. Um, that, uh, you know, that freaked her out or that, you know, it, it tipped her off to maybe Umbrella being behind stuff. And she's carried that with her her whole life. And now she's coming back to do something about it. So uh, I'm, I'm curious. And it sounds, it looks like she came back a little too late, unfortunately. So I'm, I'm curious to see what the story is and where all this goes. But for now, I actually did like that trailer too. I like the first one. There are a couple shots that I'm kind of like, eh, and a couple lines of dialogue that are kind of feel like out of contexts are really bad and stuff but that's also in keeping with like the original res evils which kind of had bad dialogue and b-movie you know feel and stuff like that and that's kind of what this has a feel for so for me i feel like that's accurate to resident evil at least to old school resident evil but uh but if you don't feel that way or you know have a different opinion or whatever it is or if you have the same let me know down below and as always we'll continue the conversation down there so let me get to work on my breakdown videos now that i have two trailers to go through and we'll get that up to you guys tomorrow thank you so much for watching like share subscribe all that fun stuff and I'll see you in Raccoon City. Peace.